Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Dean.、Uh, my brother works in IT, and he was telling me about ChatGTP、uh, back in January.、Uh, he said that it was doing such a good job in answering questions for any topics, sometimes even very technical ones. He was worried that his job would soon be replaced by this artificial intelligence tool, and he was implying that my job too could be in danger. And being as lazy as I am. As well as lack of time, I'm only starting to make a video about this now.、Uh, I know that one day artificial intelligence will replace human intelligence, but I was not sure that it's so fast. It's coming already, so I gave a try to the Chat GPT and asked it some、uh, questions related to the AI.、Uh, so, if you're not familiar with it,、um, it is a chatbot from OpenAI. You can go to its website to、uh, use it from any internet browser. Um, I am linking、uh, this under the video. This is the interface of the Chat GPT. You just need to type in the question in the box below, enter, and there it will give you an answer like an intelligent robot. I have to admit, it presents much better than、uh, I was expecting it to. Up until now, my experience with getting knowledge from the internet is mostly、uh, from Google. Where you would ask a question, and many websites can show up. You have to select the website to read the materials. Often, you have to click on multiple sites,、uh, read on, and get information you need. And there is a lot of information and a lot of human intelligence needed in this process. With ChatGPT, all you need is typing a question, and it will return the answer specific to your question. You no longer need to browse through pages of information to find the one you need, and it does so with a fairly good speed. So, let me walk you through three encounters that I had on three、uh, very common eye problems on ChatGPT. I asked、um, things on floaters, myopia control, and dry eye disease. So I asked ChatGTP a question about floaters. I simply typed in floaters, and it started giving me an answer. First, describes what floaters are, and what you see, and you when you notice them the most. And then they,、uh, it goes on to say that floaters also indicate a serious medical condition,、uh, such as retinal detachment.、Uh, so a doctor's visit is、uh, warranted in this case. I go on to ask. Posterior vitreous detachment,、uh, and now、uh, the ChatGPT is able to give me the definition of this.、Um, describes what、uh, what it does, what it involves,、um, and the risk factors associated with this.、Uh, it also says this is a normal part of aging process.、Uh, however, with symptoms,、uh, there can be issues such as retinal detachment, retinal tear, and macular hole.、Uh, it also gave treatment of floaters. I then go on to ask:、uh, Is posterior vitreous detachment dangerous?、Um, and ChatGPT says that it is mostly not dangerous and does not cause serious vision problems. However, in some cases, it can lead to serious conditions such as retinal detachment, retinal tear, or macular hole.、Um, and it goes on to suggest that、um, a patient should see a doctor when they experience symptoms. And if Uh, if the retinal tear or detachment is detected early,、uh, can be treated successfully.、Um, I want to know exactly what are the chance of having、um, having these complications、uh, in acute PVD.、Uh, so I go on to ask this question: What is the likelihood of retinal tear or detachment with PVD? And it quickly gives the answer that the likelihood uh, varies, uh, which is true depending on the studies. Um, it also says that this is a common normal aging process, but it can、um, have complications ranging from one percent to ten percent,、uh, depending on various factors such as age,、um, eye conditions, and family history.、Um, it also、uh, did mention myopia as a risk factor,、um, and family history,、uh, and as well as a history of retinal detachment in the other eye. Uh, it goes on to say that this is highly variable, and so these are covering its bases.、Um, and in the end, again, it、um, warns、uh, 
the user that if this happens, they should immediately seek medical attention. So another topic I wanted to ask is myopia control. So I asked what are the myopia control methods? And uh, ChatGB um, returns first defining what myopia is, describing what it is, and then um, gives me several methods related to control the progression of myopia. And these include multifocal contact lenses or glasses, orthokeratology, atropine drops, uh, which are all major types of treatment. Um, it also recommends outdoor activity and uh, mentioning that um, having regular outdoor activity has great benefits um, to myopia control. Uh, progressive addition lenses number five listed here. Uh, this is actually uh, proven by research to be uh, no different than regular glasses. So that is not a valid method of myopia control. Uh, I then ask, uh, how do you encourage two hours of daily outdoor activities? That's uh, known to be very, very difficult and challenging in today's world. And uh, it gives several methods which are uh, not, not bad. So for example, it says that children should follow example of adults. It also suggests to make it fun um, and limit screen time and create opportunities for outdoor play. Uh, make sure that uh, parks, playgrounds, open fields uh, where these are safe uh, so children can explore and play freely. It also says to join organized outdoor activities such as uh, clubs, teams, or programs for outside um, and make it a routine to uh, spend time outside and get creative. Encourage children to, cre to explore the outdoors by giving them the freedom to imagine and play. I think these are great methods. So a lot of challenges come from the lack of time parents have, the lack of structured outdoor time from schools, but it may be beyond the scope of ChatGPT. Uh, so I also want to know if uh, ChatGPT is going to recommend some good artificial tears. I typed in a question. Um, it first uh, defines what artificial tears are, what they're used for, uh, and um, factors to consider when choosing artificial tears. I, I like this part. So it's not just giving you names, but rather giving you a background information as to what and when to choose which type of artificial tear. Um, uh, it asks you to choose these based on severity of the dry eye, whether you have allergies or sensitivities, and uh, also consider cost. Uh, and then uh, it gives popular artificial tear brands like Sustain, Refresh, and Blink. Uh, but in the end, it also says important to consult with the eye doctor before starting any new drops and that's appropriate. I then asked what causes dry eye disease um, and it's taking it a little bit longer this time to answer uh, but it does give uh, the definition of dry eye disease. Um, it gives the reason uh, why, uh, why dry eye disease happens, uh, gives the symptoms of dry eye disease and factors that contribute to dry eye disease. And these include age. Uh, as we age, our eyes produce fewer tears, leading to dry eye disease. Hormonal changes is the second factor that comes up. Women are more likely to develop dry eye than men, uh, especially during hormonal changes, uh, such as pregnancy, menopause, or while taking oral contraceptives. And this is also true. Uh, number three, medical conditions. Uh, certain medical conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, and thyroid diseases, as well as Sjogren's, are common contributors to dry disease. And number four, environmental factors. Uh, exposure to windy, air conditioning, heating can contribute to dry eye. And number five, medications. Uh, these including antihistamines, decongestants, and antidepressants contribute to dry eye as well. And eye surgery, certainly. Eye surgery such as LASIK is well known to be a contributor to dry eye. And lastly, it lists contact lens use as a contributor to dry eye disease, which is also true. So uh, all these factors that um, it comes up with, they are appropriate. Uh, this is very good information uh, for education of the general public. 
so that is my experience and an example of ChatGPT encounter on eye problems. I'm quite impressed by how quickly it can give a comprehensive amount of information, and its format of presentation being logical, simple, and easy to understand. However, be aware that misinformation or out-of-date information can still exist. While it is a very nice platform of giving quick answers to, on a specific topic, I don't think it is able to give a diagnosis or give specific medical advice. ChatGPT itself also uh, frequently points out that it is important to see an eye doctor. It is, however, a great way to get good information quickly so that you know some background information about a specific eye issue. Uh, I encourage you to play with it and get to know more about eye diseases or problems in general. Uh, please still visit your eye doctors though and for um, accurate diagnosis and individualized treatment. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, take care and see you next time.